All right, everyone. welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Atlanta, Georgia by Dr. Danielle Harmon. How are you doing? I'm doing good, John. I'm excited mm. to be here. Thanks for having ah, me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Darnell is the award-winning uh, Inc. 5000 CEO of Incredible One Enterprises and the creator of Mo the Move to Millions method. Through her work, her small business owner clients have generated more than whoa, 365 million in revenue over the last 10 years, and 40 entrepreneurs have become multi-million dollar CEOs in the last two years. Okay, we can just stop there. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank you. And and most of all, you have your new book. Let me just share it here so people can see. Yeah. Coming out on November 7th is Move to Millions, the proven framework to become a million dollar CEO with grace and ease instead of hustle and grind. I love it. Okay, so um, first of all, um, let's get straight into it and give me kind of the background to your book, because obviously the book is based on the work you you have done. But just give me mm -hmm. the genesis of the book and why you decided to to write it. And by the way, I love that. I love that grace and ease instead of hustle and grind. That's fantastic. Yeah, big part of the reason why I decided to write the book is because I encounter entrepreneurs and small, small business owners every single day who are hustling and grinding and sacrificing their livelihood and everything that's important to them all in the name of getting to the million dollar mark. And it does not have to be that way. So this powerful book is my proven framework. I call it a part memoir, part methodology. I'm literally going to break down exactly what I and 41 of my clients, because we literally just had a client cross the million dollar mark wow. yesterday, have done in order to create a business that serves them financially and spiritually to and beyond the million dollar mark without having to sacrifice in the process. What I love about our move to millions method is that it is agnostic to business model. You can have whatever business model you want. Inside of that business model, there are five things that you need to always be focused on. You need to be focused on strategy, your sales infrastructure, your systems, your support, and your success mindset. So one by one, throughout the book, we break down the, the strategies, the things that you want to be thinking about and, and the million-dollar assets you want to get set up in your business, how to turn your sales inside of your company into a leveraged sales system. Mm -hmm. which systems to erect to allow you to replicate and duplicate your success, which makes scaling easy, who you should have on your team and the way you need to think, think about yourself, think about your business, think about those that you serve at a level that is higher than you are right now. I talk about operating from your vision point and not your vantage right. point so that you can cross the million dollar mark and sustain it over time, despite the statistics that say only 78% of those who cross the million dollar mark actually sustain it over time. Right, right, right. And, and you know what's, um, what, what's uh, very interesting about it is, as you said, the hustle and grind. So we, we've grown up in a, in a culture that sort of says, if you're, you know, particularly if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you to do things, okay, you're going to sacrifice your whole life. You're going to be 24 seven and it's going to be, as, it's, as you say, <laughs> it's going to be hustle and grind. And that's the, per and that's what people expect. So when you turn around and say to people, no, no, you can do this with grace and ease i mean number one it's it's counter to everything they've been told so what, what reaction do you get initially when you say to people no you don't have to be that you don't have to be that person that's always being portrayed as what you have to be yeah so i think the first thing that i notice the most john is people take a deep breath they right. sigh relief because so many people haven't attempted to get to the million dollar mark because they grew up with the fallacy and missed belief that they have to work hard to make money so by allowing them to put at ease their biggest fear that in order to get to this milestone, they're going to have to really grind is so relieving to them. Mm -hmm. Once we get them to take that deep breath and really settle into how it's possible, we show them how to erect the right systems and strategies, how to work their business like they used to work their job so that they can live in the eights and operate and have a family and enjoy everything in the process. Will it be work? Absolutely. But will you have to grind? Absolutely not, unless that is your choice. I think some people by nature, that's just who they are. They do a lot of work. And the reason why we want our clients and even every reader of this book to start thinking in terms of systems and infrastructure right away is because it reduces the need to have to work super hard in order to make things happen.
Yeah, and I think that's a really important point where you say about, you know, systems and processes and even what you started out in your first of your uh, your five points is the strategy is actually going in with with a purpose and a strategy and setting up systems and processes from the get go, because you're right, I think most people just launch themselves in and then say, okay, I, oh, systems process, that'll all come in time right now, I just need to hustle, hustle, hustle. And and that just makes it so much harder. Absolutely. It was not meant to be that way. Getting your business to producing the kind of revenue that changes your life and sets you up for future generations. For me, that's what it's all about, creating a financial legacy that lives longer than you. And I believe that entrepreneurship is the vehicle that was created for that to happen. And so if we can stop thinking like hustlers or people mm -hmm. who work hard and instead start thinking like CEOs, even before we are CEOs, right? Because yeah. when we first start our company, that might be the title on our business card, but we're far from that. We're spending almost all of our time in the business instead of being able to strategically preside over it. But over time, through putting the systems in place, you set yourself up to be able to hire a team to allow you to do the things no one else can do but you and have those who are doing those things leverage the systems that you created. So one of the things I always say regardless of where you're starting from, mm -hmm. everything you're going to perform in your business, the next time you perform it, record yourself doing it. Ah, record it in video or record it in audio. But what I love about video and recording it that way is you will get a video from it. You can have it transcribed. And then you can have someone on your team take and create a process map about how do you perform that particular task. If you do this for every single thing that has to be done inside of your company, you're going to create an amazing operations manual. You're also going to solidify your company's valuation so that one day, should you decide to exit from it, you'll be able to sell it for more because everything has been documented. It's the mm -hmm. perfect way to be able to set up a business that can survive without you having to be present for work to be done. Yeah, and I guess that's the that that is that is the uh, hardest part for some people. I mean, you're right. Yeah, you can start off as CEO, or as my my mother, God rest her, used to say, chief bottle washer. It's not what you really are at the end of the day, <laughs> right? You have nobody else. But but that point there is a lot of businesses they can't really be sold because they're still reliant on one person and it's all in their head and whatever. And when you know when a business is evaluated, then for somebody to purchase, they kind of go. Well, without without you, is there really a business? Correct. And I think that that that's so that's so critical, um, and especially as you said, nowadays, you, you it's very easy to get fractional resources to use outsource resource. I mean, you've got all these different skill sets, but but if you don't have documented what you need them to do, they're not going to help you much either. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the, the systems make your millions predictable. Mm -hmm. So taking the time again from tomorrow, the, as soon as you watch this, the next time you perform. Any task that you do over and over inside of your company, write it down. Mm -hmm. That immediately will not only increase your valuation, but allow you to be able to bring someone else in to be able to assist you. Whether yeah. we're talking about a contractor or a virtual assistant, they cannot perform the task without you having to be present to tell them what to do unless you actually go through the process and doing it. That's how you save you from having to be present. I remember when I hired my very first team member, John. Mm -hmm. I had she was with the company for two weeks and she was working on her own because prior to her arriving, every single thing that I did, I documented it. Now, that came from my corporate background. I worked right. in corporate compliance. And so I knew the importance uh -huh. of desktop procedures. And so I started out the gate to make sure that I do that because I knew I might start out as a solopreneur, but my ultimate goal was to become a CEO. And the only way that was going to happen is if someone else could do 80 percent of the tasks that need to be done inside of the business and I could do 20% or less. And so within two weeks, my executive assistant was up and running and productive inside of our organization, handling a myriad of responsibilities because I had enough foresight in advance as I was performing the task before she got there to document them. It's so simple. It doesn't have to be hard. Just turn your recorder on and say what you're doing so that someone else can come behind you and do the same exact thing. Yeah, and and part of that too is uh, uh, one of the things. Um, I ran a company some years back, um, spin selling, and it was based on the research of of Neil Rackham. Oh, I and, love spin. I love the spin. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I ran that for a while, and um, and Neil, who I spent some time, it was it was great. But when he did his research on salespeople, one of the things he, you know, back in the day, one of the things he discovered is that some of the best people are unconsciously competent. So they have really no idea how they do what they do. They just do right. it. And I think that goes also for a lot of entrepreneurs and stuff is like, they're so, they're so caught up in this, like running around all the time. And um, is that 
they don't think that there is that they have a method, right? So your Correct. point about stopping and saying, okay, document everything. They're like, oh, no, no, I want to keep running around. You're saying no, but you're never going to know how the business runs until you document it. Exactly. And once you create your methodology, your framework, mm -hmm. that signature way that you make results predictable for your clients, you are instantly increasing the valuation of your company. That intellectual property, you can continue to deliver it on your own to your clients. You can mm -hmm. license it to others to use. You can certify others in it. You can really expand your payday and make millions in multiple ways by taking the time to stop and document it. And so what I do, and I get it because I'm, if you know anything about Colby, I'm a nine quick start. We thrive oh. on interruptions. We love the bright, shiny object syndrome. But when I'm performing a task, literally saying, I just opened a Word document or I went to my Dropbox and I went into this folder and I looked for this. I opened up this website. And then once I opened it up, I put in my name and my password. And then as soon as the dashboard came up, I clicked this button to take me to the reporting function. And from the reporting function, like literally as I'm performing the task, just saying what I'm doing out loud, allowed me to be able to take that video, upload it to a place where members of my team can go back and watch it. And it allowed me to send it to be transcribed. So now I had a written desktop procedure in addition to a video so that anybody coming on my team could either listen to what I did and do it step by step as I do or read what I did and do it step by step. Mm. It is a game changer if you want to one day be able to make millions of dollars just based on what you've done inside of your business, not the service that you actually performed for a client. Yeah, so I know another way of thinking. No, no, it is. And what's interesting is somebody I know was uh, was working for a store recently that somebody who owns a couple of different, uh, they own a couple of different stores and they were working for one of them. And and the, the second store they were working in, they said to the owner, um, do we have any of the procedures written down? Anything? And she said, no, 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 no. It's, you just call up the main shop and ask somebody and it's much easier and quicker to do it that way. And of course they discovered it's not. It's yeah. much harder. People aren't there. You come back, customers are standing there. But, but adamantly, they would not document these things because they think that that's a waste of time, that it's much easier just to do it on the fly. Yeah. And that's a mentality you got to overcome. Absolutely. And if you really feel that way and you don't want to take the time, then hire someone else to come in and shadow you and write it all down. I have, yeah. I've had clients do that too. They're like, I don't have time for that. I don't think that way. I just want to get it done. So the person is literally right behind them asking them, why did you just do that? <laughs> so that they could get it so that they could go and create the procedure and then it could just be quality assurance, right? So mm -hmm. they can take a look at it and make sure everything that they documented is actually what needs to be done in order to get to the result we want when we mm -hmm. perform this task. Mm -hmm. Either way, it needs to be done if you want to work with grace and ease instead of hustle and grind. Yeah. Otherwise, you're starting from scratch. You're wasting so much time. You're not productive. All that time you're wasting restarting a task that if you had the procedure, you could get right to it. It's costing you money. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's the incredible thing. It's costing you money and uh, and it's costing you time and it's costing you focus. And here's the other thing is sometimes, when, you know, people think, oh, documenting process, standard operating procedures, that's going to be complicated. You're going, no, no, no. Number one, they should be pretty s simple and straightforward. But second off, your processes are there to be improved over time. You know, Absolutely. because basically, if your process isn't getting something done better, more efficiently, then there's something wrong with the process. So, I guess part of it is also revisiting those processes all the time, and and that continuous kind of improvement. Absolutely, we take a look at our systems every quarter. Mm -hmm. So we perform a SWOT analysis on our entire business every quarter. We look at every system. I have a person on my team. She's part of our operations team. Her sole function is to validate that our procedures are actually working and looking for operational efficiencies to do them better, to do them faster, to produce a greater result from them. And so every 90 days, we're, we're not doing all of them, but we're taking a, a subset or a division or department of the company and looking at all of the procedures. So over the course of the year, Every single department has been looked at a minimum of two times. Yeah. You see that that for me now that is that is a great model for people because as I said, I mean it's everything's changing so quickly and technology and stuff yep. that you have to be reviewing. And if you think you can just write a process and leave it for a year or two, you're 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 delusional. Um, the, the other part, um, you know, you mentioned uh, about uh, one thing I often come across is finding that people don't know the why 
right? They kind of, you know, they want to go into business. They want to do something on their own. They start up. But if you say, like, why are you doing that? And say, well, I always wanted to have my own business. I wanted to be an entrepreneur and, you know, I'm doing this. Would you say, no, but why, why this? And what's the purpose of it? And, and I feel that's something that sometimes we don't do enough of is figuring out why exactly are we doing something? Not just super at a superficial level, but a little deeper. Yeah, I agree. I think that when you know your why, your what has more mm -hmm. impact. And so taking the time to drill down, I'm like you, when a person gives me an answer and it's very surface, I will keep asking them why. And I, honestly, John, I keep asking them why until I see emotion. Right. Because until whatever it is that you are doing is charged emotionally to something that is greater than you, whatever it is that you are doing, you will stop it. You will quit. You will get sidetracked. You will get this. All of the things that have the potential to go wrong and happen will happen unless you're deeply rooted and connected to why you're getting up. Entrepreneurship is not easy. It is not. I mean, it is not sunshine and rainbows and teddy bears every single day. Some days it's a torrential downpour. Other days it is thunderstorming all day. And sometimes it's an ice <laughs> storm. It is the ebbs and the flows of everything that goes along with you deciding that you want to show up and solve a problem for people. And while you're doing that, make your life and the lives of your future generations all better. Yeah. There's so much at stake. And because of that, I'll tell you personally, John, there, there have been days when I have fired my, <laughs> there have been days when I have quit. <laughs> and then what, re what I remember when I wake up after a good night's sleep, I remember why I am doing this. Mm. And then I dust myself off. I get myself together. I summon the courage and give myself permission to try it again. Yeah. Because when I, when I say grace and ease, what I'm not saying is that it's mm -hmm. easy and that it will be all green lights the entire time. When I say grace and ease, I mean that there's a level of clarity and conviction as to why you're doing what it is that you're doing. And you are in alignment with your true purpose and allowing the business that you run and the work that you do to radiate through that purpose. Mm -hmm. It is your calling. It is your divine assignment, if you will. Oh. And because you are so connected to it, the work that you do feels like it's not work. Mm. If you ask an entrepreneur who is doing something they are passionate about, I'm not talking about the man who runs a dry cleaner because that probably really is just a yeah. job. But the entrepreneur who has found a cure for whatever level of disease their clients have and has watched the change come into the lives of those that they serve, mm. they get up every single day for the difference that they make. And the money is the byproduct of that. Yeah. And my thing is, if we're going to be working anyway, John, mm -hmm. we might as well get the most amount of money we could possibly get so that when we don't want to work or there are things that we want to have and we there are causes we want to support, and there are ways that we want to treat our loved ones. We have resource enough to be able to do it so that the work that we do is paying off for more than the satisfaction of changing someone else's life. We can change our life. too. Yeah, no, that's 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 fantastic. And, and, and as well, I just want to underline what you said there. But just because something just because things are simple doesn't make them easy. In fact, you know, we're Correct. very, very good at complicating things and ignoring the simple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, and, and, and that's, you know, and I think that's the other thing, too, is like is is just that why and having, as you said, having that passion and even believing. And even if you're not an entrepreneur, even if you're just even if you have a, you know, a regular job or whatever finding your why is going to help mm -hmm. you either excel at your job or move on to something else or whatever but if you're just That's doing good. it if you're just turning up and doing it and you don't really know why you're doing it for a paycheck or whatever you know it's probably going to stay static absolutely i agree again when you know your why your what has more impact whatever it is that you're doing it will be more impactful you'll do it with more pep in your step you'll do it with an energy that will allow you to vibrate at a level that you attract the attention that will help you to grow your business and or to expand your career and get a promotion. The why that we are connected to is it's purpose driven work. And it's what helps us to make this planet a better place to live every single day. 100%. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's a fantastic way to end up. Listen, thank you so much for today. All of Dr. Danielle's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. And I'm just going to bring up your book again. For Absolutely. Me. Sure. 
So I run a company called Incredible One Enterprises. We are a business transformation company, and we work with entrepreneurs and small business owners to help them to build businesses that serve them financially and spiritually at and beyond the million dollar mark. We turn them in from um, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs into CEOs of companies that make, move, and leave millions. And we do this for two reasons. Number one, because my mission is to eradicate small business poverty. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, an impoverished small business is a business that makes low six figures. I believe that you cannot live the life you really want to live and impact your family the way you truly want to impact them by having your own business if you are barely making ends meet. Yeah. And so you need more money. And the second reason why we do it is because I believe that when you have been blessed, you pass it on. If your company is making millions, that affords you the opportunity to support causes and people to make this world a better place, right? We got this planet the way that it was given to us. But once we get here, I believe we have an obligation to make it better. I believe that entrepreneurship, it offers us the opportunity to make this world a better place through the work that it is that we do and the clients we get to serve every single day. And so I... My goal for the work that I do and this book that I've written is to get it into as many hands as we possibly can so that we can get more businesses to and beyond the million dollar mark. The statistics are horrible. More people need to be making and sustaining millions mm -hmm. so we can shift the economy, we can shift generational wealth, and we can create a planet that we're all really excited to inhabit every single day. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, I'm, I have nothing to add to that because that's just uh, <laughs> phenomenal. Hey, listen, go check out the book. Uh, Pre-order it. Uh, it's coming out, as I said, November 7th. Um, it, it, you've already heard from this interview that there's so much wisdom in there. So I'd encourage you to go, go check it out. Listen, thanks again, uh, Danielle. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon.